guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Carl Torn. And I'm Hava. And today we have another scenario. So today's scenario we pinched from the Muslim marriage subreddit. And it's about a girl, I believe, who has an anxiety disorder problem. So, without further ado. My husband knows he has from the start that isn't the problem the problem comes from a good thing his family wants to involve us always in all things that's not bad now it's ramadan and his parents want us over for both meals every day yeah so how and if how is that gonna work unless she lives with the yeah true okay. i don't know actually i love them but i'm really not capable i think i'm just kind of venting because i can't imagine a good solution my therapist does encourage me to push my limits a bit, exposure therapy, but also says not so far that it undoes the progress. It's been good following her, her advice and I've come a long way. I'm married now, though, and although I believe my husband meant it when he said he'd protect me from these pressures, the pressure is there anyway. I really can't just push myself to do what they want right now, and I can do like once or twice a week, maybe two days to push myself a bit. I'm feeling terrible about it. Could I get some encouragement that it's okay to maintain my mental health or suggestions that consider this, but also show my new family I do love them? Right, so her problem basically stems from Suhoor and Iftar <coughs> at the in-laws' house. I mean, how do, so... I um, think it's a bit much they ask them to come for Suhoor. Yeah, no, that is... The thing is, at like four in the morning. If she's living with them, I can understand them basically saying, calm down, we want to have meal times together. That's okay. Um, That's okay. Really? Because sometimes I, don't, I might not even want to eat that much. I might just take my vitamins and drink water. No, but sometimes. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, sometimes, but not yeah. all the time. Like, They're I, saying I'm, all the time. Yeah, I mean, like, I can see why it does trigger her anxiety. Like, I think I, it would make me a bit anxious if my in-laws kept telling me. Like, for the whole month. Yeah, like, that's a bit too much. You've got to be prepped and ready for that every single day. That's just too much pressure. I know, but some people, like... Some people are just different. I think they just like the whole like family. families coming together and, and spending time together and stuff like that, which is fair, I guess. But you also have to let couples do their thing. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I, I mean? And I think if she did, if it was a thing where she spoke to her in-laws and said, oh, you know, like, can I please, can we just come over like once a week or something like that? I think that's a healthy boundary. I agree. Every day though, I think that's, I, a, bit, that's a bit mad. So, what are you going to talk about, so hold it. You're all tired, cross the eyes. And then if they don't live together... And if Imagine she wasn't like, living with them and they asked her to come for Sahur. Every that's day. That's what I'm saying, that's mad. Okay, I'm assuming they live together here. Because that's ridiculous. There's I no way someone would ask that. Because I don't understand either. Oh, there isn't an update. And she hasn't mentioned whether or not she's living with the in-laws. And I can, I can see why this would trigger an anxiety disorder. Every single day of Ramadan. I couldn't do that. I really couldn't. You need your own space. Sometimes you need your own space from your partner, let alone your in-laws. Yeah. And do also, like, I like the fact that she... Like, you know, a lot of people say they have anxiety and depression but don't really do anything about it. So she's seeing her therapist. At least she's got, like, an outlet, like, someone who she can go to and talk to about these issues. Yeah. Because um, most people don't. They just kind of bottle it all up, don't they? Let me say, oh, my God. Do you ever get negative thoughts? Like, really bad negative thoughts. Like, recently I've been getting some mad ones. And I always think to myself... What the hell? Imagine what people go through that have mental health issues. I know, the intrusive. Like, just constant negative intrusive thoughts. And then you have to always say to yourself, oh my god, can you just be quiet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't believe this. Can you just shut up my inner Most my of inner the time, self? it's not you, though. You know, it's, it's like a... It's just your inner monologue. Yeah. But, like, it's if you don't speak positively to yourself, or always remind yourself to be like... So like imagine you're doing something like social media for example and then in my head like the last week I had these mad thoughts like oh my god they're all looking at you really? oh my god like people are like making fun of you <laughs> so mad it's so mad 
And I know people, they probably, there's probably are. Are, they probably are, but like, <laughs> I don't know them, so I don't care. But it's like the way my inner monologue was making it such a thing. Yeah. Like, I was literally making food for the kids, and I was like, barring their food, thinking, I why know. am I thinking this? But I feel like it's come from, um, it's come from somewhere. I think yeah, you have to identify I'm, where it comes from. So I'm for great. me, it's like, obviously, um, like, our videos are doing quite well, yeah. so then that's like... <laughs> It's like another anxiety. <laughs> yeah, it really gives me anxiety. But like, the point I'm trying to make is, it's really hard to get away from anxiety and like, I feel like a lot of people feel like, I personally didn't feel like I did, I, I never thought I had anxiety in my life. I think I only got anxiety on set, on a bigger scale this year. I think we've always had it, but have only been able to identify that it's anxiety more recently. Like, I feel like I've always been a bit of a shaky person, especially in my youth. Really? I yeah. Know. I don't think like, if was. there's like a presentation or... Yeah, but if... that's natural to have, that's like a fight or flight response. It's natural to have those type of nerves. Anxiety in the sense that like, you feel so under pressure that your body can't cope with it. So you're like, you react in a certain way. Yeah, I feel really? like, oh yeah. my god. Oh my god, I've had all sorts of like, I used to get like diarrhea. No! I search when I feel like that's why I, it's like, you know the fingernail biting thing yeah. that I've got, it's definitely anxiety. Yeah. But I feel like I've been able to identify it as anxiety as I've grown up. Yeah. Before I just thought oh, I'm nervous. Everyone used to yeah. just think, oh she's just nervous, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, that's really, but it's definitely anxiety, that's you know that really horrible that feeling been, in your yeah. stomach. I recently got that now really i never i used to get nervous but like i n it never used to impact my life like that but now no no it doesn't i don't think it goes it goes to the extent of like impacting my life but it's definitely something that i feel often yeah yeah but i mean it does impact your life if you're cutting your nails if you're biting your nails know. do you know what i mean yeah but i mean it's you've found a way to cope with it yeah whereas like for me, I never, I never had that feeling before. No. So like suddenly this year, when I started to actually really have proper anxiety, I was like, bro, like, this shit is mad. I know. It's actually and like crazy. Oh, another anxiety is like Sunday evenings before oh. like the next day, like the next working oh day, God. and I've discovered it's called the Sunday scaries. The Sunday blues. The Sunday scaries. I used to get. The craziest anxiety on Sundays, Mine thinking about going Saturday to work. Night. Really? So I'm like, Sunday, it's the last day, and then Monday you've got to go to back to work. You know what it is? I just think a lot of the time, is though. Mad. You know what's crazy? It's not that bad. Not that bad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a lot of the time, it's just what we tell ourselves, and when you go into work the next day, nothing has changed. It's no. all the same. Still the nothing same is going to happen to you. No calamity has occurred. <laughs> But I just think it's the just the burden of like constantly having to have deadlines. Yeah. Do you know when you went to university and you constantly had deadlines and you just think, once I finish this degree, it'll be over. And it's not over. And it hasn't ended. Two because months the later. jobs that we've picked have given us the same deadlines in a different format. Yeah. But you know what I like? That it's not as intense as university deadlines. Oh, yeah, yeah. Job deadlines are like, okay, walk in the park. But it's... Yeah. Like, I do that thing where, um, you you know when you procrastinate? And yeah. then within that procrastination period, you're going crazy. Like, anxiety, skin yes. flaring up. Just because of the fact that you're, you're not just doing it. Not doing the work that you were supposed to do. <sighs> but what is it? What is it about my laziness that makes me not do my work? <laughs> That's why I ask myself often. <laughs> like, some like on a Monday morning, I'll get my little snap note, write every single thing that I need to do, and then for half an hour, I'll look at that note and I won't do anything. Because in my be head, I just phone. think, because I look at it, I'm like, it's just too big, I just don't know where to start. And then, and then it gets to like 11 o'clock and I'm like, okay, cool, I've got to do something. <laughs> But I think the problem is as well, it's like we always think we need to get through that whole list in one go. And I found that if I break the tasks up into smaller tasks, yeah. then they're more accomplishable. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And also, don't you feel so great after you've done one thing? Yeah, and I'm like, yes. Yeah, so I've, like, the done day's it. mine. Done it. But, um, conquered. But yeah, if you break up the tasks into smaller tasks, then usually, I don't know, I get crazy dopamine from completing tasks. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I feel like, for me, I, I set my tasks throughout the week, so if I complete 
all the tasks in the week, that's when I feel better about myself. I don't like to carry things on to the week after. Yeah. I think it's just the type of job. But you know, I even what, like, what they say to um, students as well is like, when you're revising, don't just revise like block modules in one go for, for, for eight hours. Yeah. You have to like basically do like two hours, then have a break, two hours and have a break. Yeah. Because that way you'll actually get it done. It's more achievable. It's more doable. Yeah. And it's measurable. Exactly. So uh, yeah, I mean, you know, anxiety, you've got to conquer, hun, that the mother-in-law or the father-in-law that's oh, basically yeah, making you, <laughs> that's basically making you come for Sahrad and Iftar every day. Every day is not realistic. I just think people really need to give, you need to understand the, the, she might be shy, the aspect of like, giving your time to people like yeah. every i mean no matter how much you love your in-laws oh my god our makeup looks so nice no matter mm. how much you love your in-laws and your family sometimes you can't give that much yeah like and the ramadan is a time of really reflecting on yourself and your ibadah and that should be time spent with yourself do you know what i mean between yeah. you and allah yeah like you need to i think the problem is that maybe she's afraid to have the conversation a lot of the time people it's just like the fear of You're confrontation it, yeah. isn't it and if she was to just turn around and say like look auntie or whatever you call your in-laws or i think it's the husband maybe he should be the one that says it i don't think it should be her yeah, because I think that's a very awkward thing that's to say true, to actually. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, sorry, I don't want to come to your meals. No, like, I think he should be the one that, oh, well, we've decided, or I've decided that, yeah, we're gonna... Because it's his parents, Yeah, like, it? it's not hers. That's true. He doesn't even need to, like, dob her in it. No, I just cushions. think he says no. I just yeah, think, just be like, oh, sorry, I said sorry no. mum, can't do it today. Or the yeah. next day. Or the next day. <laughs> or the next day. And maybe on the Friday. Yeah, we'll come over on Friday. Do you know what I mean? We're not working on Saturday, so we'll have a great night. Do you ever think about having a therapist? Yeah, I do. If I could afford one, I'd probably get one. But I don't know if I'm like... The thing is, everyone, I think, needs therapy. So I don't know. I but actually... I think there's a difference. I think there's like counselling and then there's therapy. And I feel like counselling's really dead. No, I think counselling is the one, yeah. therapy is the one that we need. Counselling is the one that you just talk yeah. and you just listen. And I like the fact that there's more therapists out there that look like me who probably understand the issues, the that, issues that I'm, I'm going having. through. Yeah. But then I always think to myself, have I ever had a Somali therapist? I couldn't! Could she go back I, to me? I can't. Imagine we like, ended up at the same wedding one day and she's just, I, she knows all, she my, knows all my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I could never speak to a Somali therapist. I don't think I could do it. I just feel so like... That would be so like, I don't know how. Somalis in London especially, like, I it's can't. very, it's too close. Somalis around the world, it's just too close. Someone knows someone. Someone knows someone. She probably knows my third cousin twice removed. Do you know what I mean? No, I can't. No. And I don't think, I I would like to have someone Muslim. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, um, someone I don't think black. I would want, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if I can do so. I don't think someone I'm ready to, un <laughs> to offload to <laughs> <laughs> I just laugh. Like I can't, I can't. So man my mum did this to me how they <laughs> you imagine she'd have to stay completely impartial as well. I reckon she'd start laughing as well, but she's writing her notes thinking oh, yeah. Yeah, I relate to this. I relate to this trauma. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, like par back to the scenario, we've got to keep like you know You know us too, we just we just go off on a tangent. But yeah, like get the get your husband speak to his parents and tell them it's not realistic. As, As ever, well. we love you guys. Thanks for listening. If you've got anything to say about the um, scenario we've just discussed, please put it in the comments below. Got any final remarks? To My add? final remarks are don't be afraid. You are battling all the things that you're battling. Just go get your husband. And they probably understand. Yeah, like just go get your husband. Who's got time to see people every single day? You've just come out of bed. I just want to quickly what? <laughs> go back into my bed. Do you know what I mean? Do do my what's it called? Prayer, 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 and then I'm done. Like who's got time? Guys, how's your first week of Ramadan been? How are you guys finding it? Let us know how your first week's going and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.